Sorry. Okay. I have just, and now it's recording. Go ahead. Great. Um, so, um, as we've discussed, you know, we are currently at uh, 49 staff members, including myself, um, 13 of which are dedicated to, including myself, are dedicated to admin functions pretty primarily, you know what I mean? There's really no way to decouple us and start getting us into public service uh, without causing a lot of other kind of things to get off, off of center. So that leaves us with a very small staff, essentially half of the staff that we need. Um, what we're proposing, what I'm, you know, what I'm, what I'm suggesting, we've discussed with staff, Rich, please don't look at this, um, but the, we're, we're bundling, we're putting things together into pairings, right? And those run down pretty quickly. Um, you know, they're listed out in, into an email. And the idea is that by having our branches and combining our staff, we will be able to function one library well at a time and have them alternate. Because of the number of hours and because of the idea that it's really important we get away from kind of crisis staffing. We have been in crisis staffing for some time. It is possible because our doors are closed. We're just interacting with our collection and really that's it. We are at the point now where we're starting to look to open the doors again to providing better services, particularly for students, you know, who are in the blended learning or the offsite learning. I have two kids who are in it right now. They are attached to their computers and our Wi-Fi is a big deal, right? So these are things that I think are quite important. We also only have enough staff to do sensible staffing for one shift, like one 35 hour increment. Typically in libraries, you'll have split shifts. So you'll have a double shift, you know, where somebody will, where one team will start from nine to five, another team will come in at 11, they'll go to seven, you'll end up having like two people, but during the middle of the day, there's four people, but you have a two person kind of float and all this kind of stuff. It's also how we do Saturdays is people will work, you know, Monday, Wednesday, you know what I mean, and do it that or they'll have Friday off, or they'll have a day off in the middle of the week. And that's kind of how that works is that is that elasticity that we essentially need like 1.5 staff in order to have this this expanded schedule off of a standard 35 hour a week schedule. We don't really have the staff to do that now. Um, I'm trying again to get us away from this survival staffing because we're heading into flu season. Kids have conflicts. There's a lot of home stuff that's going on. The schedule I'm proposing is not perfect for anybody. And I am well aware of that. It's not perfect for the public who will have pushback. Uh, and it's not perfect for my staff. And I'm getting a lot of pushback myself. Um, you know, the six o'clock thing is hard for daycare pickup. It's hard for a lot of things. It also works best for the public. These are simply our most active hours. The time when somebody goes from work, picks up their kid, gets stuff from the library on their way to pick up their kid, these, that, that hour is a very hot hour for us. You know, not a lot of action at nine in the morning. And while it seems like Saturdays would be intuitively the right time to be open, they're often, most often quite slow in the absence of programming. Now, if we have a big program, look, I was at an Irish dance program at, at Hazard. It was a madhouse. It was great. But that's because there was a huge Irish dance program that day. We're not doing that now. We're just having people come in. So on that level, I really feel, and, and, and this is also based on my experience and also based on that of my librarian threes and a lot of our staff is that Saturdays are not as busy for us as we were going to find that a Monday would be by especially now with all the kids, with all the home learning and the, the offsite learning and the requirements of people from there. So that's why we're proposing this schedule. What this will allow us to do again is to have some break in there in case there are things that come up in case, you know, like FM, you know, my daughter's school is closed this week and my nephew's school is closed next week. So, you know what I mean? Thank God my wife is home, but a lot of our staff don't have that. So, so that's kind of why we have a, want to have this built in so that if one person is out, then we don't have a risk of shutting down branches. Also, when we start opening up to branches again, we're going to be following the same um, standards that, that were put out in the, the opening two document that I shared with you folks. I, I'm, I'm happy to share that again with the board so that it's fresh. The one addition to that is that the health department has asked that we use scheduling software, which will allow people to have some contact information in case we have to contact trace. I have raised with them the concerns of privacy and anonymity. People respond with, you know, if I go to church, I have to register for church. I dig that. I don't, have an, I don't have an assumption of anonymity and privacy at church. Everybody at church knows me, but 
you know, this is not a hill for us to fight over. If this is what it takes for us to start getting our doors open, I think I think we need to do that. I think it's very important that we integrate more deeply into our community than we've been able to up to this point, and that means starting to open our doors again. As you know, there have been these cuts. There has not been a lot of conversation around them because the public simply don't see them. Their their service has not changed. They're still getting they're still getting drop off, you know, six days a week, twelve to five, and 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 that's great. But it, you know, it's got our staff there. I mean, we have multiple libraries where there's two people in the library for long periods. It's just not sustainable, particularly as we go into cold and flu season, and particularly as schools get even more complicated. And that's my pitch. So what you're saying though is that you're flexible. If if we learn something two weeks out about adapting the schedule, we'll consider changing it. Yeah, and Ed, actually, thank you so much for bringing that up. I want to actually build that into this. I want to have like a built-in review in three months. I think that's important for staff too. So, I mean, I think that I think that we build into this conversation that we have this conversation again in January, in the first of the year. We have a lot of conversations to have in the first of the year as to whether we're not going to start doing programming again, what that's going to look like, and this schedule, absolutely. And hopefully it will change. I mean, hopefully we will start to get people back in again. I mean, this is our crisis schedule. And the schedule is designed to be a crisis schedule. But once we start getting people back from furlough, we're, I, I absolutely want to adjust it. Ed. Thank you very much for that clarity. Well, let me be Bob Manning for one minute. The military always says adapt and overcome. So absolutely, that's our Man, I miss Bob right now. I got to tell you guys, I wish I was running. I wish I was running this whole thing. I've got a whole war room set up here. We've got like four or five whiteboards going. We've got stuff going on the table. Jill's been in to see it. I wish I wish I had Bob in there looking at it right now. I got to be honest with you. I really could. I could really use his help. You've been in his glory. So it sounds like you got a whole bunch of bad alternatives and this is the least bad one. Is that fair to say? Best as I can see it, Tim. I mean, nobody's happy. Yeah. Christian, does this, does this allow, um, you know, we've got the holidays coming up. Mm -hmm. Does this allow people to take time off? Yes. Okay. So, so, I mean, I don't know how into the weeds on library branch scheduling you want to get but right now we've got three four people okay trying to cover trying to cover the branches right and that's in some cases it's down to two because of the furloughs and that's kind of unsafe after you get you cannot you cannot open it below two it's just not safe even at the level of get, handing somebody a bag it's just not safe so so we're not doing that but what you end up having early is you have like okay so i'm the second guy on the library i'm the this is, okay anecdote this has actually happened for me i actually had my daughter in the emergency room and could not leave work for three hours because i was the only librarian at that branch and it would have meant the queens had to shut down a branch for, for an afternoon so my wife and my daughter were in the emergency room but i had to be in the library because i was the only librarian and they couldn't run the library without a librarian so that's kind of an example of the stuff that happens right people get very hung up on this stuff they get very stressed and they, you know, and they should, people take, this is a vocation, not a job. People take this stuff really, really seriously. If we can get it to where five to seven people are scheduled at a time, then they can deal with the customer, the patrons as they're coming in. They can deal with making sure that people are complying with masks. They can deal with a level of service that has them wearing face shields. They can also start doing things like reading journals and planning programs and doing Zoom programs that go out to the entire county, but are time consuming. I mean, it's not, a Zoom program is not as easy as us just doing this. It takes a lot of time. You know, a lot of my team have discovered that doing it in teams of two to three, even four people, you know, really makes a difference. So this allows that elasticity, it allows our staff that breathing room. Morale is really low right now. Um, and what this will do while jumping around between branches is gonna be a pain the ability to say, hey, my kid's school is closed and have that just be like, okay, hey, no problem, Z. That's gonna be a huge thing for us. And as you say, once we get into the holidays, yeah, absolutely, people have a right to the holidays. Right now, people definitely have a right to the holidays. So I really just want to alleviate some of the pressure while also starting to offer more services to our public. I really feel like right now, especially with, you know, I mean, the digital divide is a whole new thing now. You know, we were getting very nuanced about that for a long time, and Sam, you and I have talked about this, that the digital divide got really nuanced. It is not nuanced now. You know what I mean? It's literally, you get your 
public schooling that is your right as an American kind of stuff. So, I mean, I think we got to, I think we got to kind of, I'm, I'm tired of being on the ropes, guys. I kind of want to come up off the ropes a little bit, you know? I think if this lets us do it. If we approve this today, how soon can you open the branches? A couple, three weeks. Um, what we need to do from a, from a, just a union and a labor perspective is we have these new, you know, we have these new clusters, we have these new pods, people are talking about it, and we'll give people the option of opting whichever pod they go into. And then that will become their new work, homework location is that kind of cluster, right? So we want to give people a week to do that. And then after that, we'll start making assignments. And I want to give people at least a week, you know, week, maybe two weeks notice before they actually start doing this kind of combined schedule thing where they start going back and forth people are going to go to the wrong location i've done this you know what i mean like i've literally done this schedule and it's a mess you know what i mean you get really confused and staff get confused until they get into the habit and it's the same with the public so i figure maybe a week or so after we start getting staff in there and start getting them into the space so probably near the end of october would be my guess maybe for halloween maybe do a spooktacular kickoff which i would really love um, but maybe we don't miss the timing on that. I'd like to stay flexible. Christian, um, uh, for transparency's sake, can you talk uh, maybe about one of the clusters and what that schedule will look like for a week? Sure. I mean, that is still up in the air and I want to kind of admit to you openly that that is up in the air. You know, with scheduling, often simple is better and provides better service. You know, it's pretty easy to do the idea that like this week, it'll be Monday, Tuesday, you know, this week, it'll be Monday, Wednesday, Friday at this location. Next week, you know, it'll be Tuesday, Thursday. So everybody has a Monday and a Thursday and all this stuff it just gets really complicated. So we'll probably look at like using hazard and Monday. Uh, um, yeah, using hazard and Monday as an example. Um, you know, Hazard is a great branch. It's kind of quiet right now because they haven't had a branch manager for a while. Um, I mean, not for a while since Carol left to go over to, um, you know, to pet it, but it's kind of a little bit of a sleepy branch and could do, could, could, could do maybe two days a week, although they certainly have a community there that does their library pickup and would be coming in. It's a beautiful branch. It's an easy branch to manage physically because there's good physicality to it. Um, but with Hazard and Monday, I would probably do Monday... Monday, Wednesday, Friday, hazard, Tuesday, Thursday, you know, white pain, white pain's a hard one, but I would probably do a similar break for that. Um, Pettit Sewell, that's pretty transparent. You know, Pettit's pretty, Pettit is crazy busy with the pickups um, and Sewell is looking to grow. You know, I mean, I think that we're looking to expand stuff with Sewell. So I would do three days at Pettit, two days at Sewell. Um, Beecham Betts, same thing, three days Beecham, two days Betts. Um, and just kind of stagger it and, and have that be the schedule. Now, is the public gonna love it? No, but in a month, they'll know that's the schedule. They were no, because they don't care. They don't care about all the other branches. Trust me, John Q, Jane Q, they do not care about the other branches. They care about their branch. So they're gonna learn what their branch's schedule is pretty quick, especially if we can establish one that's, that's set and established. You know, and Tim, just to go back to your point, I mean, this is not perfect, folks. I wish I was handing you like, I wish I was handing you craftsmanship. I am handing you like a shoddily emergency built thing with duct tape and bailing wire, but it will work. So any questions uh, from the board? No, I think um, I asked my primary question yesterday. I got a good answer to it. Um, there don't seem to be any good solutions here. This is probably as good a solution as we're going to have, uh, you know, while we're so shorthanded. Hopefully we'll get our furloughed employees back in, in March. Um, who knows if we'll ever get the part-timers back. I mean, we're playing, you know, pretty much with two hands tied behind the back right now. So I'm not sure what else we can do. And your question yesterday was about Saturday and, and we now understand why Saturday um, is off the table. Yeah, yeah, and and I I understand that you can't you can't use volunteers you you can't use usurp, usurp union rules or anything like that or contractual arrangements that's just not not feasible. It's a great idea, but it's just not feasible. So uh, much as I you know I I probably stop by Liverpool more often on Saturdays than any other any other day, but 
and and I don't even know if they have a plan to reopen now. I haven't been on that board now for some time, but uh, it seems to me that this all, is probably all the working on it too. Yeah, this, so, you know, the, the, unfortunately, we we didn't ask to have our workforce cut back so dramatically, and we we got to play with the cards we're dealt, and that means Saturdays have to go. Tim, um, Liverpool is open. Um, by appointment and you should look at their, the videos on their website. Um, Jill, I'm here representing Liverpool. Oh. Glenna, Glenna is off, hello. Yeah, Liverpool has been open by appointment for computers browsing children's room since July 15th. Susan, Folks, thank just, you. Just okay, yeah, the only time I've been by there is to pick up stuff I had on hold yes. and that's in the garage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you, Tim. And, and okay. there, is, there is a space on our website, I'm sorry, Joel, there is a space on our website that has a listing of what all the people in the county are doing, and that is that is being updated, that is being regularly updated by communications so people can see what, what their local community library is able to do and what the new rules are for that. Okay. So um, I'm hearing um, the beginnings of a motion to... Um, uh, I think staff. Sam has something to say. Yeah, well, I, I don't want to interrupt ahead. you, Jill, if you want just quickly, I, I wanted to, um, I think, say, first of all, I, you know, Christian, the plan is really great, given the resources that we have, and it's not fair that, uh, you know, we can't, we can't do more and, and that so much of the workforce has been lost. I, I do think that making sure that we are continuing to, to uh, show that this is happening despite the the lack of workforce and that that is used as a tool to get folks back and that we aren't you know doing as much as humanly possible and then um you know and then not getting the staff back that would hurt morale that much more so really calling that out and then i think the second thing is the virus is still very much a threat the news this morning i think makes that extra clear um and so um reopening and, and doing that with the safety that we need especially with a, a smaller staff is just continues to be so critical so i know you have all the plans but just mentioning that is a thing that we continue to think about and monitor and even encouraging folks that come to the library making sure they know about the um, tracking app that the state just released all those things i think are things that are valuable for a library to do Thank you. So um, the motion I, I believe I'm hearing is uh, to schedule city branches using a cluster model with specific branches open 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, and for this uh, model, the schedule to be reviewed when? To be I reviewed, I mean, I would ask that it be reviewed by the board in three months time at the first of the year and that constant review be built into the schedule with elasticity at management's discretion. So, I, can with, I can go with management's discretion as long as we get notified. Sure, of course. I mean, part of it is just going to be like, you know, once we start fine tuning this, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it's not 10 to 6, maybe it's 930 to 530, maybe it's 930 to 530 at these locations or whatever. But yeah, of course, I'm, I absolutely, hours are a big deal, Ed, and I absolutely will definitely keep you guys in the loop. Um, I consider, you know, notification of trustees of ours to be crucial. I mean, really, really, really crucial. So I, I will make sure that you are updated Ed, for sure. Okay, I'll move it. A second. Hold on a second. Um, so I'm, I want to reread this. Uh, uh, schedule city branches using a cluster model with specific branches open 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. This is to be reviewed by the board at the January meeting. OCPL management is to review the schedule regularly and alter with management discretion with board notification in advance. I heard Ed move and Tim second. Um, 
uh, Edda, you need to know that we have to do a voice vote uh, on, on things of importance. We're, we're used to that now. <laughs> uh, so let me pull up my list of, of the board. I want to get uh, uh, Rich first, if he's still on the call. I see him there driving. I'm here, Jill. I'm here, Jill, and I am in favor. Thank you. Uh, Sam? Uh, here and also uh, in favor, I. Ed? In favor. Tim? In favor. Marilyn? In favor. Edda? In favor. Any other board members on the call? Lenore is on. Uh, uh, yeah. She's not on the board yet. She hasn't completed her oath of office. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. I also vote yes. That is more than a quorum, and so the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. You didn't much. ask for votes, right? Thank That's you. all we have. So there's yes. no, you don't need to ask a post. Okay. Yep. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate this, and I really appreciate the unanimous endorsement. That's a strong endorsement. That, will, that means a lot for us. So thank you very much. Christian, thank you, Christy. Please, please thank the staff for their hard work on this plan and for you yes. from the thank board. You. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll make sure that that gets out today. If you, probably everybody here has been through a workforce reduction before and know you know how that affects staff morale and I know it's not an easy time for uh, for anybody at uh, OCPL. Yeah, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough out there. And I saw your hand up. Uh, and another matter of positive note, I have a note from a woman that uh, is a patron of, of uh, Monday Branch. It's very short. May I read it? And I'll send you a copy. Sure. Uh, during the strange time of COVID, I wanted to let you know what a lifeline library has been. The books on hold move slowly, but Becky McGuire at Monday, I didn't tell Becky I was reading this, and I, she doesn't know about this, has picked up the pieces and chosen books twice for me. I would say this last time she went the extra mile and even called Carol Johnson at Hazard for suggestions. I miss seeing the kids, and I hope we can return to some form of normal soon. In the meantime, I just wanted you to know that Many of us appreciate the library. Sincerely, I, I might as well give the name, Mary Anderson. It's, it's someone that has written to us before very favorably about the goings on at Monday Branch. So I'll send a copy on for the record, but I thought it'd be worth having a positive note today. I really appreciate that, Ed. Thank you very much. Ed, if you send that to me, I can put it in the minutes. Yes, okay. Thank and you. I'll send a copy to Rebecca McGuire, who was mentioned in this. Oh, hey, there. Becky's in the meeting. Hey, Becky. All right. Awesome. Hey, there she is. Hey, nice one. I was going to call you and tell you about this. Good job, man. Thanks. Nicely That's done. Really that was really nice. Thanks, Ed. All right. And also, everyone, as we've been very worried about cataloging, um, I was in Dane's office and I asked him a question and, and Becky appeared behind me and she had the answer and she was over in a corner, uh, neck deep in the DDC and the ARCL2, uh, the A, yeah, like all of it. She was actually doing all of our original cataloging uh, out from Monday. She was working at Central yesterday, uh, really grinding through the, um, the original cataloging. So props for that um, right now, Becky. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Christian. And I just wanted to say, you know, speaking for the branch managers, we've talked to each other. We really like this plan. And um, of course, it's not ideal, but um, I think it's going to, you know, let us, like you say, stop playing catch up and be able to start to do all the things that we can try. Thanks, so, Becky. Thank you. Good plan. And thanks to the board for your support, too. Really appreciate yeah. it. OK, um, I believe that this is all that we need to be doing today. And our time is running short. Uh, unless there's anything else on the board, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> it's a tradition, Ed. <laughs> so I want to thank you all very much. Keeping. If any of you want to come into the library, we have space in the boardroom. I'm happy to run everybody through every plan that there is, all the iterations, all of the permutations. Uh, just let me know. I'd love to talk. So we actually need a second to adjourn. I'm sorry. I believe we do. I'll second it. Okay, Marilyn. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any, anybody want to keep moving, keep meeting? Don't hear anyone. Uh, then I will see you all at a regularly scheduled meeting later this month. Thank you. All Thank, you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks.